welcome um, panelists to this session. I'd like to just uh, ground the, uh, the session first with some background from uh, my colleague Shashank. Before coming to Smart Cities, the bank has actually, I just would like to share that the bank has been doing a lot of work in the uh, in the space of implementing new technologies in the urban sector. Uh, in other very innovative uh, uh, solutions from the Indian projects are uh, AI-based, artificial intelligence-based uh, building approval systems which automate something like 124 different parameters under various laws being automated and digitized and the new building approvals can be given by the system itself. So there is, there is a lot which is available within the country, but when we started discussing the smart city, uh, the projects and the programs, we found that there is a whole lot of knowledge outside the world, and I think we need to bring all this together. We also found that many of the technologies or solutions which are available have been successfully implemented outside India, may not be implementable as it is uh, in the Indian situation because the ground realities are very, very different. So what is this process? Uh, the big challenge will be to get these best solutions but adapt them to the Indian requirements and then implement it locally. Do we have the capacity to do that? Because in our projects we have found the biggest challenge uh, on, for successful implementation has been the capacity on the ground. The way a Smart Cities program has been uh, the, uh, structured is that the funding, the organization, the political support is all coming from the central government and the state government, but the implementation is decentralized. And that is another big problem we are finding because what we are asking is that the program should be implemented by the 100 Smart Cities but we have not been able to build the capacities. Has any of these 100 smart cities have any expertise or people on the ground who have ever implemented a smart city? So that is another big piece which is missing. There are more than something like 12 to all, all the way up to 20 different agencies which are working in the particular cities, and it's not the municipality alone. So how do we bring all these 20 plus agencies to work together? So those are some key challenges. And how do we actually build capacities in all these multiple agencies? And that is where this study began. What we tried to do was to work very closely with All India Institute of Local Governance, which has been mandated by Government of India to do training and capacity building. And this, I think, then, uh, at this stage, I'll request uh, our partners, AILSG, Ravi, to present what uh, the study was all about. Uh, we are a very old organization, almost 90 years, so we have been pre-independent. We have been working and supporting the urban local bodies and local government across India. Uh, there are various profiles that the ILSG is helping and working with the cities across India. Now, also some of the, our South Asian cities are here. We are working with them also, uh, providing the maximum work on the capacity building programs. But this is the 25 cities that we have selected across India. Uh, the selection also done with this, some of the parameters. We looked into the various categorization. So we looked into the geographical coverage. We looked into the capital cities. We looked into the, uh, the different round of selection. We also looked into the, our presence for mobilizing the resource easily. We also looked into the small to large scale. So that kind of uh, you know, cities that uh, we have selected. So for the business and industrial centers, we have the Ahmedabad, Guwahati, Faridabad, Nagpur, Raul Kela, Rajkot, Bilaspur, Aligarh, and Bareilly which were the nine. Capital cities we selected is Jaipur, New Delhi, Panji, Bhopal, Raipur, Port Blair, Ranchi, Dehradun. Commercial and educational cities we have selected uh, Mujapparpur and Karnal. Cultural and tourism, Gwalior and Varanasi, Agra, uh, Dharmsala and Namchi, and port city, Vishakhapatnam. Even if you look at that, the, uh, you know, phase, the round four, that is also been given here. So we looked into the uh, most of the SCP review, and uh, what we found that these are the basic four, you know, uh, classification. I say that has been has been part of that. So these are the different national schemes which uh, actually converged into the smart city plan. 
there are many ministerial also um, uh, under the uh, smart city uh, plan conversions. State level, there are many departments which were actually converged, conversions were there. We thought that let us have a consultation. So we did the consultation leadership level where we met chief executive officer, additional CEOs, or whoever is a higher authority. Then draft has been discussed during the 30th November workshop, where we called almost 25 to 30 smart city CEOs, where the presentation has been done by the team, and we got the feedback and done the, some kind of a group activities as well before presenting today. So finally, the data analysis and finding, there are certain things. Uh, if you look at the um, scope, size, and nature of a smart solutions, so if you look at that is most of the cities are maybe looking into the smart mobility. Most of the uh, cities talks about the e-governance. Physical infrastructure mostly talked about, 25 talked about mobility, water management, and waste management, sanitation. And within the mobility, these are the plans that's been talked about. Uh, social infrastructure also, there is a, a, a smart classrooms. Most of the cities has proposed about the integrated uh, command and control system. So if you look at the integration within the IEEC, that's an integrated command and control system. So this is the figure that you, talk, you can see that. Like for example, water and sewage SCADA almost 48%, transport 72%, uh, smart parking, 64%, uh, and then GPS solid waste management, 68%. We looked into the uh, smart solution would require GIS, a speci a special data and non-special data integration. Uh, for the implementation of project, because you know that most of the smart cities are talking about the different source of fund generation. So like government is giving 500 crore and state government is giving 500 crore. So rest of the money has to be generated by the city. So there are a lot of... Uh, you know, different models have been proposed within the uh, proposal. So if you look at that, there is a, once again, there is a, a differentiation. Once again, uh, we asked also the cities that have kind of a technical staff in SPB and ULBs. Uh, we also asked the capacity and skill gap and challenges, key challenges in implementation of the project. So this is the response that the city has given. Uh, we also asked the what kind of a key areas for the capacity building for the smart city project. So they mostly is liquid to the figure, mobility almost 90%, because most of the city has proposed the mobility plan, uh, you know, smart solution for the uh, um, uh, mobility. So look at the, I mean, requirement and the terms of capacity building. So if you see the maximum, they are looking for the advanced, some kind of a leadership, technical training programs, and operational programs. This is what the, uh, try to give you a glimpse of that, the res, uh, study that we have done and the result that we, we have. This is what we are recommending and uh, hopefully things move and I think more or less we are trying to align this entire program with the uh, Ministry of Housing Urban Affairs training program so that result can be achieved more. Thank you so much. What I saw in the report made a couple of things flash in terms of traffic lights. There's some stuff where everybody realized that they have some capacity issues, particularly around the technology skills, but where I see the proverbial cat circle the hot porridge and, and beating around the bush is really the realization on how do we ensure that all the staff is multidisciplinary to ensure that we get around all the different elements. What I see is, is, is a risk of doing just smart whatever, but we stay within our silos. And this is not the point of a smart city, a smart nation, or a smart community, or a smart organization. It's breaking down those silos. I'm not saying that there's no capabilities in the city. So on the contrary, I think there is. And India has a massively large skill population at all levels. But there seems to be a lack of and a traditional challenge at place that we've also seen around the world in all global cities and in governments that the use of the technology is more that we are dragging it up the hill instead of using the technologies to pull up up the hill. Yeah, so, so we're pushing the technology all the time without actually looking at the realization. So in terms of sort of regulatory barriers, this requires lawyers, obviously, in terms of technology, that requires technicians, but we need to get them into the same teams so we don't get a legally defined or technology defined smart city. 
I was trying to look at the ecosystem as an academics, and I figured out there are so many layers within smart city itself. And I figured out the focus of the city leaders was more on building up the integrated command and control centers. But let's not forget the whole idea of that is to fulfill the second layer which is to ensure that the governance is good, safety and security of the people is ensured, education and transport is there, and utilities are there. The amount of data which is getting generated is not a joke. And while doing all that, we come up with new theories, new policy frameworks, we come up with new tools, which again makes the ecosystem not easy, but more complicated. So this is what we are here for, to dissect, to post-mortem, to, to kind of unravel this, uh, you know, these layers, and then see how they fit in together without much noise and pain. I just want to take you back to the theoretical concept of capacity building, is not just training alone. Hence, my proposal is to work on three levels simultaneously, not just three issues simultaneously, national and global, institutional and individual. Once we mentally think of these three levels, we would know where we need to make changes, collaborations at global level, hand-holding and establishment of center of excellence at the institutional level and local level involve the startups. Center of Excellence should be a neutral body, which is like your ITU, IEEE, something like that, which is constantly providing academic content on capacity building, where we co-design, pilot the best and the worst practices, where we focus on emerging technologies, where we focus on policy updations, where we focus on collaborations and convergence in Indian context. We need to incubate innovations at startup level. We need to ensure traditional knowledge systems of the countries and the cities are retained so that the soul of the city is ensured. Hence, smart city leaders, all of you are here, from almost 15 smart cit uh, cities which are already here with us on, in this event, let's realign to the needs and aspirations of the citizens. Hence, I'm sure World Bank would agree with me, we need not just be citizen first, but also with citizens. We also would collaborate so that all countries and partners are, are on the same page with regard to templates and content, are having same database of trainers and practitioners so that there is like sharing of expertise, and we constantly keep monitoring these tools. Final takeaway for all of us, this one. Ruminate it, munch it along with your lunch. While doing that, dear friends, let's preserve the soul of our cities. Let's preserve the diversity of our country. Let's still be the same through initiatives like this one, Smart Republic of World Bank. Thanks a lot. To me, there are four things that come out. The one is related to the context. And we kind of undervalue the context in which we are trying to implement the smart city projects. The context is the culture of the cities, it's the institutional structure of the cities, it's the history of the cities. They're trying to implement something which is global in relevance, but needs to be locally contextualized in order for it to make sense. Then somebody talked about leapfrogging early this morning, and uh, there is an uncertainty involved with leapfrogging, uh, because you don't know what's on the other side. You don't follow the natural path of development to reach the next stage. You leapfrog to the next stage. And Jane, you said this morning that you need a lily pad, and I really agree with you that you need a lily pad. You need a structure to base that leapfrogging on. Then it's this uh, opposition by people. You have this concept of needs, and you don't know whose needs you're satisfying when you're actually making a vision of the smart cities. Is it for the majority? It is for the minority? That's one dimension of it. Is it, in the case of Indian cities, is it basic infrastructure needs, the gaps that you're trying to fill, or whether it's leapfrogging into high technology urban development? So there is a question about addressing needs here, which needs to be looked at. And then I think another part of the challenge which most, most smart cities face is actually upscaling or actually transferring the learnings from projects to urban development. Maybe when we are thinking of capacity building, and this is my feedback also to the report, that when you're looking at capacity building, not we've identified the sectors and the needs the cities have expressed themselves, 
But picking up on Charu's presentation, different cities are in different places with respect to the structures they have for implementing these projects. The second thing that I would like to advocate for is an innovation-based approach to capacity building, an experimentation-based approach to capacity building. So I would advocate also for looking at early phase capacity building, as well as looking at a more varied mix of actors involved directly with cities. It's been called hand-holding. It can be called many other things. Uh, but a more broad-based experimental and innovation-based strategy for capacity building. I'll stop here. One of the things that when they did an assessment of the MDGs, and that is that they realized that institutional aspects were really the weakest things that came out of the implementation of the MDGs. And if you're looking at SDG 11, you really have to tackle that. You really have to tackle public sector and government. And we're talking about government infrastructure and services, public services. Yeah? If you want to focus on something, this process has to be strategic. It has to be relevant, yeah? so linked to the, the issues that each of these cities is facing. It's going to take time. It's going to be multidisciplinary. It's got to be participatory, without a doubt. And it has to be a process which helps governments understand where they are now, where they want to go, how they want to get there, and how they know they've arrived, basically. Yeah? It has to be a process that helps people establish priorities because you just can't do everything yourself. It's about building or developing the capacity of local governments, whether it's the SPVs and the relationship to the line departments, but it's also about making sure that the capacity stays in India, yeah? that we don't all fly in as consultants and say, here we are, but in fact, that we work closely with Indian training and capacity building institutions to make sure that their services that they provide are also, yeah? So if you're looking about how we as international people can contribute or exchange knowledge, it's not only with local governments, perhaps through innovative practices like peer learning, et cetera, et cetera, but it's also how do we as capacity building institutions partner with Indian capacity building institutions. Yeah, thank you. I feel that if we talk about um, the challenge of smart cities, it operates predominantly in the left, right, lower corner where we have, are uncertain about the goal and uncertain about the means. So the, the, the question is, if there is no clear objective where we want to go, um, what should be the process? And, and, and I think that is the major challenge of, 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 of this smart city uh, program. Um, and that also means that if you talk about capacity development in the traditional way, it, it is absolutely inappropriate. And that was also uh, mentioned by you. So we have to find another way how to build the capacity um, in, in a process which, which has no, di no clear objectives, but, but has maybe some intermediate uh, objectives. So it, it's, a, it's a long term process where capacity building should be part of it. It's a co creation, a, a process of collaborative learning. So the question is how to, how to stimulate, how to foster the process of city to city learning. And what we see uh, um, worldwide that city learning networks, they, they are really coming up but we hardly reflect on how these networks are, are working. Uh, what's the effectiveness of city exchange programs? Uh, so I think there's an urgent need to have a better understanding how these networks should work, because I think there is the, the, the key for this program. Uh, how can we really engage cities and maybe have some vanguard cities who will transfer their knowledge to other cities, but how should that process be shaped? What is the interest for cities to really engage? What, what, they, what do they bring and what do they get? Um, and from peer learning, we, we know there are some principles which are required to, to shape that, that process of peer learning. And I would say that the uh, assessment study NTA would, would, would maybe improve if it would pay attention to that, that dimension which has been identified by Roulet, and I, I fully embrace it. Thank you. And let me tell you, 
uh, you know, whenever we talk about smart cities uh, in this country, a lot of people come back with apprehension that, look, we don't have the capacity. We don't have the uh, wherewithal to execute. The fact is, in this country, you know, we have a record of issuing the company registration certificate the fastest in the world. We, in, in Ministry of Corporate Affairs, MC21, the portal that we have, the same set of people who were working manually are issuing a company certificate in less than six hours of time. That's the beauty. It, this, is the, this is the country wherein by the time you come out of a passport office, you have an SMS. By the time you reach home, you know, you have an SMS that your passport has been printed. And if you are staying outstation, by the time you reach home, the passport may reach before you. Right? So, and this is the same set of people who were issuing this passport in 45 days' time. In, so the answer probably lies somewhere not in a whole capacity building program. Answer probably lies, ladies and gentlemen, in creating a culture for capacity building. These are the suggestions that, uh, that, that I have. One, emerging technologies will need to be a part of the core uh, awareness agenda. So artificial intelligence, IoT, blockchain, whether or not, whether force feeding, whether required or not, whether somebody wants it or not, I would need to train these people to prepare for something that is definitely bound to come to them. That's one. Second, my existing and future, both workforce would need to be, need to be trained, would need to be developing the skills. And to me, in, in countries like, emerging countries like India, the best, uh, uh, you know, part and, and would be to develop skills while working. Capacity building for smart cities will not be two separate silos of ICT capacity building and domain capacity building. It will be one put together. And finally, you know, capacity building for us is not people sitting in this hall. Going forward, a citizen will have to be trained on usage of this. You know, end user literacy from my side, end user literacy would also be a part of my capacity building. If not capacity building, at least an awareness building plan that I will need to create about end users. I can talk about back-end skilling, back-end operations, but if I don't talk about the front-end users who need to be trained. And that is where, you know, uh, people like us come in, and when we engaged with the Indian government in SAP, we created this program called Grow with SAP. For citizens, we created a program called Kodunnati. We are actually giving digital literacy to citizens. And we are also highlighting the horizontal transfer by picking up champions, we call them digitalists, and showcasing to the world that this thing. Five ministries have so far come forward and shown inclination to partner with us, and we have uh, moved forward in a collaborative way to build what we call it as an ecosystem, which will lead to the implementation success. Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm there for questions in case you have. My question is, we did some studies on this in the Netherlands, where we, we have some worst case scenarios that about 50% of the Dutch municipality employees will face a, a drastic change of their job or even lose their job. Uh, what I want to address is how do the experts on the stage uh, look upon this, this issue? How do we deal with capacity destroyment because of smart cities? I have two options in that case. One, uh, I, don't, I don't take this path at all, which is no option, right? Second option is I, I create alternative jobs which will actually offset the job losses. And so long as I am able to create more jobs than, than the lo jobs I'm losing. And the answer, that's why I had put on my slide, the education system has to be a part of the capacity building. There will be number of extra roles that will get created. It's a matter of how I am able to integrate my education system leading to those uh, things. The, if, I'm, I'm sure the next question could be in your mind is, are we doing this right now? The answer is no. At least uh, in India, uh, you know, we are still, still, I would say, struggling to come to pace, but we are reaching there. Teach us how to prepare a business case of smart city. 
So um, how do we put this uh, explanation, rationale, to be presented to the city councils and also local government that investment in smart city is something really beneficial? Uh, if we have to achieve the SDGs, and SDGs have three pillars, the economic development, the environment, and the inclusion. If you have to achieve the goals, smart cities is the only answer because that's where 70% of your population will be. That's where 80% of your revenues and GDP contributions will come from. And it's also estimated that that's where the 80% of the pollution and the uh, harm to envir environment is coming from. So if you are to achieve your SDG goals, smart city is the only option. So that's the rationale.